Hello and welcome to the Motorious Podcast. Today we're going to be covering a number of topics like what the least efficient American-made vehicles. If you're a car guy or gal, who cares? Fox News does, jerks. So we're going to cover that. We're also going to cover the new Bullet movie and ask important questions like, why are you doing this? It's probably a, a guaranteed dumpster fire, but... It looks like it may be happening. We'll also cover some things like uh, a guy who basically plays bumper cars with his uh, C8 Corvette um, and some underwater vehicles, including the uh, Felicity Ace sinking, which was that burning ship off the coast, uh, uh, I believe Portugal, uh, that had a bunch of electric cars on it. Anyway, let's get started. All right, so Bullet uh, movie is being remade. How do we feel about that? Terrible. <laughs> wow, they took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah, I'm, so we don't know a lot about it. Um, it comes from a deadline report, and it says that Steven Spielberg is heading it up. Um, mm. I'm not sure if that means he's going to direct or if he's just acting as a producer. But uh, they claim there's no script, so I think everything's up in the air. As far as what it's going to be, um, the sources that Deadline talked to claim that it's not going to be a, a remake of the original Bullet movie, but instead it's going to be a continuation with Frank Bullet and some new adventure or mystery or whatever. <sighs> That's the claim, but you know we've seen Hollywood studios that claim something's going to be something, and then they do the exact opposite. Well, they don't do they don't do anything original anymore. I mean, it's going to be another <sighs> terrible remake, and then. Yeah. Yeah. If it had any mild success and two years later, they'll make another remake. Oh man. Yes. So yeah, the, the big question is though, who could pull off playing Frank Bullet? Because Steve McQueen, big shoes to fill. I Do think... they care who can pull it off? Yeah. They're gonna if, if they announce Caitlyn Jenner as the star of this, I would not be surprised. Uh, it's gonna be wrecking quite a bit if that's the case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, yeah. I... <laughs> Legitimately, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna person. need a stunt driver for sure. Oh, they yeah, because baby, Steve McQueen. Yeah, I mean, what what actor could drive like Steve McQueen? Oh, um, um, oh, what's his name? McDreamy guy who used to be. Uh, oh gosh, Patrick. I can't remember his name now. He can drive. It's not Patrick Dempsey, is it? Yeah, Patrick, yeah, Patrick Dempsey. Dempsey. Yeah. yeah, he's yeah. like a big race car guy. I didn't watch guy. the one. I, I think I I think I'd prefer Caitlyn Jenner in that role. Yeah, That's I mean, Patrick Dempsey he couldn't he couldn't pull off the whole detective thing. I mean, he was a detective in uh, Scream Three, but I mean, come on. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> nice reservoir of a yeah. memory there. Well, I legitimately random Patrick Dempsey Rose. <laughs> One of the I was in Scream Three. Kids could probably do it. Like, who, who could? What's One that oldest the... one? Yeah. I mean, I don't know how many kids Clint Eastwood has. Huh minor disruption there yeah one of the uh, clean eastwood's kids chad eastwood i want to say chad eastwood yeah the old he, one the older one race? i don't know but he's got the right look huh. like he because, looks like his dad but like i don't know a little better looking I don't know. Part, part of what made that uh that chase seem so memorable is the fact that steve mcqueen was actually driving and uh they say that he had a lot of flair to it he put in some moves that they didn't have in the script and made it more exciting um and so then they also didn't have to like have some stunt guy with a wig on and you know his head turns so you couldn't see his face and you know right. he, he's looking out the window the one spot where he's burning rubber and you know it just made it more exciting you knew the actor was driving the car again i don't think they care this is all going to be cgi uh um, well, you know in front of a green screen and and i pointed out not in the article but when i was talking to elizabeth about this that you know, I hate to say it, but it's not a new phenomenon. It's just become more intense with the remakes. Because remember, uh, Gone in 60 Seconds came out in like 2000, I think, 2001. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With Angelina Jolie, where they looked like they like dug her up from the ground and reanimated her. <laughs> that was heroin chic, and it oh, was in, Stephen. She looked horrible in that movie. Anyway, <laughs> um, and that was, hor that was a horrible remake compared to the original. But a lot of people 
you know who are younger you know uh they don't realize that because they haven't watched the original they so they think well it wasn't a half bad movie and when you compare it to the original it sucked yeah uh, that's usually the case yep so what else uh, do you think they're gonna remake they better not touch smoking the bandit like i'm done <sighs> They will. If they touch smoking the bandit, they can't. Like, now that you're putting it out there, now they're yeah. really going to have the gears. Somebody's out there going, yeah. someone's like, oh, that's a good idea. Let's, let's get to moving on that. But it, Who but can do it? It's going to be a continuation. Would change it? Would it be something else? Pot run? <laughs> Pot run. Meth run. Yeah. <laughs> Fentanyl run. I'm trying to think Fentanyl. of like what's yeah. illegal. So we could do one where they run. go to like Washington and get like some mushrooms. And then run them back. It's like everything's legal in Washington, I hear. There you go. So, except, except for bump stocks. I mean, yes. Like, yeah. Well, there are some limits. Yeah. Maybe we could try, or they could traffic weapons. We're not going to traffic weapons for sure. No, no. Um, don't give, don't yeah. give them all the good ideas. <laughs> don't give them all the good ideas. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, what's left? You hear that, criminals? <laughs> <laughs> not again. Here we go again. Yeah. Um, yeah what, what else would they remake? Um, Fast and Furious? No. <laughs> Yeah, the no, they're still making those. They're like, hold on, yeah, we're gonna start yeah. over with this. They're still squeezing the juice out of that, but yes, they will redo the make, Italian. They'll job. remake it with like Harry Styles. They, they <laughs> can do the Italian job, but with electric minis this time. So, Ooh, changes the story big time. Uh, they Awful. they might it might be that, but actually, I didn't hate the Dukes of Hazard remake, and I think that's just because I'm so easy when it comes to cars, like. If you mm. have a car that jumps over something, I'm like, yeah. Go okay. <laughs> Fast and Furious had that, and it wasn't a good movie. I mean, okay. Well, besides that movie, but oh, like so in the extras, they showed how they like launched, like, and it was filmed in my oh, yeah. area. So they like launched it onto a road that like I drove on. So I'm like, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> Try to find the exact part and recreate it. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they were in downtown Atlanta and they had the, the flag like on the top of it and everyone was like oh my gosh like so i admit I controversy yeah i mean it wasn't like substance wise i mean there wasn't much there had jessica simpson johnny knoxville and that like token funny guy from the 90s i don't even remember his name but yeah that one guy wasn't he in patrick Disney? scott or something he was stiffler oh, Burt reynolds was in it too yeah, he was right. Boss Hog, wasn't he? Yeah, not? Yeah. yeah, he was in it. But wow. they had some good mm. slinging around of the Charger like action. But yeah, I mean, it was it was pretty like vapid of a concept to begin mm. with. So yeah. I what, mean, I watched I watched the show when I was a kid, and that wasn't exactly you know highbrow. High, uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it was fun, but it wasn't super. It was just, it was a it was weekly fun. physics lesson. Yeah. That's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't happening. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I mean, who who would they have play bowl? Oh, and the other important thing is, what cars will they have in the movie? I mean, I speculated they would put a Machi oh. in there, oh, have Frank man. Bullet by drive that. I I can well as much as I hate that, I could see them doing it. Kia Stinger, a Kia Stinger. <laughs> and some people are like saying uh, they'd have the the villain car be a Tesla. So Machi mm -hmm. versus Tesla, you know, silent car chase. <laughs> <laughs> and they yeah. run out of juice like. yeah <laughs> and they until they run out of juice and they both have to pull into the charging station only they can't go to the same charging station because the charger inputs for both are different so you know don't write the movie for them Stephen. <laughs> I know, anyway. so much <laughs> let's uh, write itself yeah. <laughs> wrap this up and uh, pitch it they have, to gun, them. they have a gunfight while they're charging their cars and then they get back in yeah all um, right so Again, you're listening to the Notorious Podcast. Uh, we're on YouTube, Spotify, anywhere that you listen to podcasts. And we're doing video this time. So if you're listening on Spotify, or well, actually you can do video on Spotify. But if you're listening, Apple Podcasts, um, switch on over to YouTube. See what we're doing. Uh, so let's talk about these headlines. We had a little bit of controversy this week because you know all the gas stuff that's going on we had we stumbled across a pretty tone deaf article on fox news that basically instead of ripping apart the policies and the situation that has caused the rising gas prices and certainly people are going to lose jobs you know the people might starve because of this this is a big deal like it's not just oh we're gonna like walk to the grocery store instead of drive like we're, oh we're gonna get like bicycles no this is like gonna affect everyone 
um, and it affects the people, who, the people who make the least amount of money, it's going to affect them the most. And then, you know, truck drivers, like the cost to fill up a truck is going to go way up. So, and technicians that work on your houses and, you know, all this stuff, but they decided instead to talk about Hellcats and TRXs getting bad gas mileage. And that's just so tone deaf. Like, it just, it, it's the same as saying, oh, well, just go buy a Tesla. So, well, and, and the thing Fox that I noted, News. The thing that I noted uh, in my op ed about it is that they focus only on American cars. Yeah. There are plenty of Mercedes and BMWs and Land Rovers and so on that are, uh, that fall into the gas guzzler tax. Stephen, what are you saying? Don't well, say yeah, that. Yeah. Why didn't they rip on the European cars that guzzle gas? And there are fun, some yeah. Asian cars that do. Yeah. Yeah, they got some V8s out there. Why, why focus just on American cars? It, it just, it seems so elitist to just focus on American cars. Right. Hate us because they ain't us, I guess. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> American muscle cars are just such an easy target. Like, I've been getting this because I have American muscle cars. I've been getting this for a long time where it's just like, oh, like you did it to yourself. But it's like, I don't care about my Hellcat and my formula filling up gas. I care about my husband who has to go to work in a truck. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't like do this to myself because I have a Hellcat. Like, I don't, you know, I know my Hellcat gets like 12 miles to the gallon. I'm not really specifically complaining about that. So (sighs) I've been getting, you know, that's always the, yeah, the reap what you sow. It's like, what if gas prices go ridiculously down? Like I was just playing a long game. Yeah. (laughs) See, I won in the end. But we all, we all make our choices and so on. But to sit there and pull that elitist attitude just because somebody yeah. drives a V8-powered American car is, yeah, it's just elitist. I mean, the people driving V8 American muscle cars, they're probably like, eh, well, you, you know, like, this is it. Like, we've been doing this. We don't care. But, yeah, I mean, like, heating our homes is going to get more expensive. Food's going to get more expensive. Everything's you know, going to get more There's going to be people who, like, won't be able to pay their bills because of this like yep. and then oh but don't buy a hellcat yeah. okay like that's, that's a great solution yeah. like yeah. thanks and our i mean what's the what is the gas mileage in a hellcat what's a mile uh, per gallon <laughs> average um, is it really that bad it is no, bad i don't really bad. know i don't even pay attention to it but like if i fill the tank completely up i have a range it was 220 but for some reason it dropped down to like 186 like that's my entire range. So I don't know whatever it. math that is. You can look, but like I don't, I don't care. Like I don't want to. Well, the, the, the EPA <laughs> estimates, the way that they calculate those are just ridiculous. Nobody drives that way. So yeah. Well, um, it shows it. Like yeah. it shows your average gas mm-hmm. mileage, like on the screen. So does but mine. I, yeah. I don't even look. Like I don't want to know. It, it was you something like twelve attention. the last time I checked. When you really press the accelerator, it just drops way down, and then it's just a yeah. laughing emoji. <laughs> you can put it in like five hundred horsepower mode, and it turns the supercharger off. I think, yep. but I, John did that, and immediately, like as soon as he turned his back, I put it back in the regular mode. I'm like, we're <laughs> not neutering my Hellcat. Yeah, it's yes. it's, it's not point. why we bought it. Yeah. My scat pack actually got really good gas mileage. It got like 25 miles a gallon, which probably doesn't sound like good gas mileage to anybody else mm. unless you, but all I've ever driven is V8 muscle cars. Like that's it. And I had an SUV for a while. Yeah. Trucks and, are similar. Yeah. I mean, I just, yeah. I wouldn't know what good gas mileage is, but seriously, mm. this situation, it's not good. And it's like V8 muscle car drivers, like why, why bring it up? That's not that's not the core issue. No. We're not we're not doing anything to harm it's anybody. A, it's a lazy, lazy article. Yep. Someone yeah. had to meet deadline. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe he had this <laughs> like scheduled ahead and it wasn't really like his intention. And it just so happened to come in time with the news it's, that they're putting these sanctions on. So yeah, I'm gonna give him a I mean, little that credit. With editorial calendars. I yeah. wouldn't mind yeah. having him on on the podcast and just talk about this because I, I want to know kind of that what that perspective would be that you know V8 muscle yeah. cars are the yeah don't drive these oh that solves the problem I won't get a TRX <laughs> <laughs> like, good to know yeah yeah all right so another big headline uh, this Felicity Ace with the electrified cars we've been talking about that a lot 
Uh, this is just one of several articles that we've written about it. There's been a couple of uh, like famous people who had cars that were on this ship, um, Matt Farah, and then there's a car collector who had a really expensive Bentley, and like he he was <laughs> doing an interview, and the response was kind of like nobody cares, dude. <laughs> like, but there was a, a whole bunch of Lamborghinis that I hear they can't be replaced for some reason. I think that might be my, Lamborghinis or Ferraris. I can't remember which it one. It was Lamborghinis. But... Yeah, because Lamborghini says they won't replace them. Yeah, because they like they have a cap of cars that they'll make with certain cars. I mean, yep. some of them they'll mass produce, but I guess these like they had met the cap, so Lamborghinis just like, well, oh. <laughs> Here, here's your insurance money. Yeah, just... next so... year, <laughs> better luck next year. The situation is sort of interesting to me. I mean, we know we don't we don't really know what started it. We probably won't because okay. it's sunk. But one thing we noticed is like there was all these ships out there. There's all these pictures. There's all these cameras, but there's zero pictures or video of this thing. Allegedly, it turned on its side and then it sunk. I believe it. I believe that happened. But why isn't there pictures or video of that happening? That's weird. It'd be pretty awesome to see. I mean, why? Yeah, that would be yeah. crazy. How long? How long is it just sitting out in the ocean, burning? Uh, what a was week. it? Two and a half weeks, yeah. three weeks, something like that. Yeah, because the the thing with those lithium ion batteries is they burn so hot mm -hmm. you can try to spray water on them. The water will evaporate before it hits the flames. So they have to use dry chemicals. I mean, the, the, oh. I've, I've known firefighters, um, friends and such who are firefighters, and they've told me about the training that they have for. Of fighting lithium ion battery fires and yeah they're, they're way more intense so a lot of people say well, why don't they just spray seawater on that mm. and i mentioned that and some people freaked out like i was so ignorant no they can't <laughs> do that i i wasn't saying they should do that yeah with a normal fire they could do that they just funnel the water up out of the ocean and shoot it onto the fire and put it out and then they can deal with it but this one they couldn't do that right so it's a huge Irony. problem fire in the middle of the ocean can't put yep. it out <laughs> yep. what well, was your theory happens. on why they don't have a video because we were talking about this yesterday what did you say you thought Maybe they... oh gosh I, I don't want to be labeled the conspiracy theorist here too but, late no, steven I'm... just just <laughs> lean into it that for, for any wonders, and i'm not saying this is the case because i don't know because we don't know but i'm like did they sink it on purpose because they just couldn't put it out and they had no way of, of stopping it even the dry chemicals weren't working because there's so many lithium ion batteries i don't know that might not be the least bit accurate. I have no idea on that. That's why I didn't put it in the article. Mm -hmm. well, that would be I, great for the environment. Just don't know. If that's... Yeah. yeah. Now, <laughs> now someone's going to freak out that I'm some sort of conspiracy theorist. But I mean, it's weird. It's like, I... it's weird. Yeah, it's weird that there's just no video, no photos. Yeah. We're just told it sunk. And it sunk in a, a really, a, sound like it's a breeding ground for a lot of different sea life right so you have all this uh all these pollutants and we don't know exactly what the impact is going to be but you can't tell me it's gonna be good to have all those ruptured batteries on the bottom of the ocean <laughs> just gonna be how what, what about the dry chemicals that they would have sprayed i mean is that good for the I environment how, i don't know how toxic they are i really have no idea because i'm not sure if uh, what mixture they used if they always use the same i mean this was a, the portuguese navy taking care of this so ah no well, idea what they use or if only the best the, even if they even got the dry chemicals there because they said they were going to put together a ship with them and then next thing they're saying oh we're towing the ship mm -hmm. to somewhere and Maybe then they messed it up sunk the, the bottom of the ocean it sounds like <laughs> yeah like what happened to the ship with the dry chemicals on board to fight the fire well never, it sank <laughs> i never saw an update on that yeah so the whole thing was just weird and this picture is the last picture that i've seen i mean i searched and searched and yeah. searched and this is the last and it looks pretty intact i mean i can see it tipping over but yeah it's yeah. listing to one side you can tell like mm -hmm. whatever side that is i never remember <laughs> Is there any picture of it where it's actually in flames? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If I, I would have earlier been. pictures, but this it looks like the fire is probably contained to the uh, inward portions of the ship. I guess you don't see any smoke, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I feel like that there's a lot that they're not telling us. So yeah, um, I mean, I think we just go to the place of like 
there's something more to it just as yep. journalists like when we don't something get the more full than... story <laughs> investigative journalism yeah. <laughs> yes. we need to find out and, and they're not so good for the environment as it turns have... out i mean too bad we don't have a team of like 500 people we can dig into this but send somebody yeah. else there to go scuba diving and a submarine yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> submarine. see the ship Hey, if somebody does go explore the ship in a couple of years, that'll be a really good story. Like that one that we yeah. did with the World War II vehicles on it or whatever. Like that yep. they went scuba diving, check that out. Well, it all depends on the depth at which it was sunk to. Like 18, 1,800 feet is what it says. I yeah, mean, pretty- yeah, there's there's no way a human's going down there without a submersible. Yeah. You send yeah. a camera down. Yeah. I've seen the, the guy in the fishing show, the jeremy guy i can't remember his name but he used to send down like all kinds of cameras and see like these creepy sharks that live like in the complete dark get one of those Mm. i have no idea what you're talking about but yeah yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) stack guy yeah somebody out there knows the name of that show i'm just Ah. blanking right now but yeah uh hopefully we find out more about this but i doubt we will i mean what are, what are your theories, guys? Leave some comments. Tell us I, what happened. Yeah. Like, we, we need to know. So, yeah, we do. All right, something else. Speaking of <laughs> underwater cars, Duncan we cars. didn't plan this, but <laughs> just the way it's going. Yeah, this, uh, we, we, we write about cars and water a lot. So, you want to tell us about this one, Stephen? Yeah. So, uh, they, uh, some people who are scuba diving, if I remember correctly, they came across this 57. Uh, Chevy and they didn't know what it was because all the emblems had fallen off and apparently they have never seen a 57 Chevy in their life because it's <laughs> one of the most easily distinguishable cars out there <laughs> anyway they had no idea what it was and they posted it on Facebook and like a uh, nomad. People pretty quickly like that's a 57 Chevy yeah. so anyway then they're trying to figure out how it got there and they finally figured out that um, back in the day to raise funds for the town they would put cars on the frozen lagoon um, in the in the springtime, <laughs> and people would bet on what day it would fall through the ice. Oh. They, they would tie like a, a cable around it so they could pull it out. No, and so I years ago ran across this is actually a somewhat, or at least used to be a somewhat common thing to do in uh, Great Lakes towns back in the day. So, because, you know, you're bored, everything's frozen. Yeah. <laughs> the cold gets to you, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, but they put cables around them so they could pull them out of the water, but some got caught on, like, underwater <laughs> roots or other things, and the cables broke, and they can never get them out again, so. Damn line broke again. That's how that just, ended up there. And, just and get that, a casino like everybody else. And that does crazy betting point. games. If you're, if you're an off-roader, you know that uh, winches do not always work, despite what people think. They're not these just foolproof methods of uh getting some you know recovering a vehicle yeah so they're just gonna leave it there they're like "Hmm." and those uh steel lines when they break are (laughs) downright deadly so uh yeah 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 great way to lose a leg whip you for your head yeah yeah, worst case worst case but let's not forget the core message here is that my whole cat is killing the environment Mm -hmm. definitely not the lithium ion batteries and the nomads like it's, it's not destroying the ocean yeah well, so they, yeah they don't want to extract this, this <laughs> chevy could. out of the water because uh it's in a turtle breeding ground and they think that the turtles have integrated with the car which is really oh, interesting good so for if them. they take it out now they can mm-hmm. actually destroy some of the turtle eggs and such so <laughs> classic car saves environment yeah. is the go. backup story that, you know this that, that's just the funny part about it is you know, we talk about these cars underwater ruining the environment, but now they're saying removing the car from underwater could ruin the environment. It's become uh, one yeah. with the environment, the habitat. I don't Freshwater know. Freshwater turtles appreciate the classic Bel Air. <laughs> they probably do. Yeah. Well, speech your sunken log any day. I mean, it, all right. Classic cars saving the water. All yeah. right. So this, is, um, this is one of my favorite stories from the week. The bowling, the bowling ball, ball Corvette. Bowling ball Corvette from Bowling Green, Kentucky. <laughs> that was just too good to not not throw that in there. No play on words there. I uh, like that. I mean, this this was a case of of uh, somebody who, um, 
and a lot of people have opinions about what happened. Boy, do they have opinions. But according to CHP and the California Highway Patrol, um, they're out on this road. Um, I can't remember which highway it was. But anyway, they're out on this road. It's in a fairly rural area from the looks of it. Um, and the, this guy driving the C8 Corvette uh, probably was upset because traffic had slowed down. And so he went to pass three cars, probably punched it. Don't know if he's speeding or not. Uh, CHP cited him for speed and reckless driving, or just reckless driving, but I think they said speed was a factor, if I remember correctly. No. <laughs> and uh, the, it turned out that the traffic had slowed down because the truck in the front of those three cars was going to turn left into a dirt parking lot. And so he hit the truck as it was turning, and as mm. you can see, flipped the truck. Mm. And uh, at least one or two of the people in the truck went to the hospital. Not oh, in man. serious condition, okay, but okay, still yeah. injured. That um, looks pretty the serious for the truck. Guy in the C8 apparently wasn't seriously injured, so... Yeah, seems fine. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, just my ego. Yeah. yeah. Up to and the windshield, car. man. Um, it's a pretty... Yeah. I think it's totaled. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> engine's still good though since it's yeah. a rear engine car so there's a lot of usable parts engine's probably see it good. at copart so, soon so but some people they got on google maps were trying to argue that he the truck wasn't turning into any parking lot or i don't <laughs> you know talk to california highway patrol because they were on scene not looking yeah. at google maps and well, they i'm could, looking at these pictures and i don't see like it's i don't see rails. anything either. But I mean, maybe the car slid. Maybe it's in another way. I mean, I mean, he might have been rolling that truck... for a while. So I wonder maybe it's on the other side of the road. I don't know. Yeah, it's just on the other. I mean, side I, of the I doubt the truck is pointed in the same direction it was going originally. But who knows? Yeah, maybe it across this way. body of water here that uh, there's like some turn in, and he's going to go fishing. Something he was going like to have that. a good time. He's going to go fishing mm -hmm. for. 57 chevys and then uh, it's been a hell of a week just go <laughs> <laughs> take a nice little easy turn and then and get flipped by a corvette there you go yeah. yep. i've seen a lot of american performance cars like flipping trucks over <laughs> like high freaking gas guzzlers i think it's because they're so low that like, <laughs> yeah. they just get under yeah. there and they just yep they just flip them oh, out. Yeah. out it's like a little so... spatula yeah, like a special, like a special little city. Playing California Highway Patrol flapjack. So those are our top headlines of the week, um, and we'll link to all these stories as usual in the description. Let's talk about some of our comments. Um, they say stay out of the comment section, but we just put our hazmat suits on and go all in. Um, and we read comments, and a lot of them are mean. But we don't care. We're brave. So let's talk about them. Zach, you want to? Yeah. Share so some of these. Yeah, sure. I mean, going back, I mean, uh, we can look at the uh, Fox News yeah. gas guzzler article because we that can, went that we just a caught lot of on fire. On those, yeah. most of them agreed with us. So, yeah, yeah, some of them got pretty spicy. Yeah, too. But yeah. we're gonna this one just this guy's just making kind of a sounds like he's trying to make a logical point here, and he's like, Ugh, "Don't sell your car because gas prices are high. They're just trying to get you to." part with it right now because it's valuable mm -hmm. as soon as gas prices drop while the car market remains high someone will sell it for twice what you bought it for and you'll be stuck with the lesser vehicle you traded it for okay that's a fair point. point i mean that's what happened in the 70s you know people talk about the conspiracy theory yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> before it's gonna happen again yeah it did it did happen well, even with the uh, cash for clunkers, some people traded yeah. in what they thought was a clunker, but it was actually collectible, and they didn't realize it. <sighs> no, but but what happened to those cash for clunkers? I mean, what did they get Ooh. clunked? Them. Yeah. Or did well, someone? They they had, some, uh... some weren't actually junked. Some were saved, and people resold yeah. them, and that was a big controversy because that wasn't supposed to be. Yeah, I thought the government said like that they had to be destroyed well you know there's never any fraud in well government trust service. yeah actually, <laughs> you know 100 trustworthy we haven't seen that with the covid yeah. relief funds I and mean, yeah mm -hmm. people take advantage hey maybe that's where uh the commander-in-chief got his corvette from because he was in office that's not substantiated put that aside for me thanks Pure speculation, Kay. I mean, we're only human. I would do the same thing. Let's <laughs> yeah. see. So let's let's jump back to the uh, the bowling ball Corvette 
Um, and this guy, he's just finding the silver lining, silver lining and everything. He said, this is a real world safety test and the Corvette passed with a good score for passenger safety. Mm. I mean, he's not wrong. I mean, I guess, I guess. Yeah, for passenger safety, not target safety. I, I wonder how a, a C4 Corvette would have survived a crash like that. Um, it might have not have been dented. I mean, was that made out of steel? Fiberglass. Those are fiberglass. Oh, uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Even the floor plans on those are fiberglass. That blows my mind mm-hmm. that you would have fiberglass. Like, Well, it's for fuel economy. Hmm. Well. well, and performance. <laughs> hey, so perfect true. timing. Yeah, great. <laughs> Get yourself a C4 Corvette today. We have a it's lot not of, a gas guzzler. We have a lot of decent C4s in our inventory. Maybe that should have been somebody's inventory pick this week. Oh, I dropped you get the it ball. for pretty cheap. C4. I should know better. Yeah. 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 Definitely not a steel body. Way to go. Motorials. So I'm going to steal your thunder here with another comment because I want to talk Take about this story. So, this was about a chop shop that was like busted with all these um, like Hellcat engines or whatever. So, it says, My renter stole my Z28 out of the garage. I'm, I'm not laughing at your pain, dude. That just sucks. Um, with my snap on tool that just oh that's oh, man uh, you know like, a little backstory there is like the renter was actually my girlfriend and she yeah. hated the car oh, yeah yeah well i'm wondering what was what the situation was it's like i don't i don't know i have trust issues like with my cars like mm-hmm. i you know the, the long guy was just here and i made sure you know the every the car's in the garage i'm gonna throw stuff off my desk <laughs> and you know you can't see the garage doors are closed and all that so uh, you know i had a guy come out and detail the cars and that made me feel a little like uneasy so i don't really understand these people who allow access so i don't know but without knowing the backstory like yeah who knows sucks. maybe maybe the renter was somebody he knew and trusted and yeah we just don't know that's this, this what most happen. crimes are committed by yeah, this is true. Are those who we know and trust because they have opportunity the well, this, this uh, chop shop bus was amazing when you look at all those that, axles yeah. and powertrains yeah. and all the other parts and wow that's a lot of money yeah and but you, you also look at detroit how many stripped carcasses the, they're just dumping on the sides of the roads there it's the car theft problem there is bad it's just modern art Steven, so how, give us a little, get with it, buddy. Give us a little backstory on how they actually caught this. Chop how chop. they caught it? They didn't divulge the details. They just said <clears> that <throat> there was a, a, a Charger Hellcat stolen from a dealership lot. Mm, of course. And they started investigating and led them to the chop shop. They didn't see an how exactly. They, Apple, uh, was it? Air tag. <laughs> well, yeah. So here's the thing is a lot of times these guys, when they steal the cars, they park it in a public parking lot. And they leave it there for a few days to see if there's a tracker on it and somebody shows up to recover the car. And then after it sits there for however many days they feel comfortable with, then they take it to the chop shop. Mm-hmm. They figure there's no tracker. The cops are going to show up at the chop shop. But this time they did. And how? We don't know. Right. Probably don't want to tell us. It's like, no. We, they've caught on finally. It's like, you know no. what? We're not going to go pick it up until seven days. Maybe they're <laughs> going to use us to bust more of these chop shops. And so they don't Good. want to help. Yeah. yeah. Especially in Detroit. Oh, my gosh. Oh. I'm not seeing a Hellcat engine in this mix, though. There's got to be at least There's, one in there because yeah. they took a Hellcat. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's a lot of just kind of eh engines, but that, still, it's a lot of money. This looks like something nice. It looks might be like a 392. Could be. There's... There's a ram. Uh, him, yeah, I don't know. It's Green in there ram. somewhere, I guess, but I don't and, see. And it. just, but that's a lot of money. Yeah, especially when it's free. They said it was a seventy-five thousand dollars car. I want to know what dealership, because that's a pretty good deal on a new Hellcat right now. <laughs> like I don't know if it's like eighty up. It might have been used. That's true. I don't know. <laughs> they didn't say. Yeah, there's a lot of details missing in the story, but you know. Poor well, guy. At least they're starting to catch people. Or, yes, that's yeah. the good news. Another silver lining story. Yes. Yeah. Right. Well, at least we're catching them now. So that's that's what's going on right now. Um, and you know, we like to talk about the wild past of the automotive industry. We've got a good one today. Um, you know, Enzo Ferrari. You know, as the the Ferrari guy, the the race car inventor, 
or not, you know, inventor, but the Ferrari race car, the Ferrari race team, all that. But Stephen found out a little bit more about old Enzo. Um, so let's talk about that. Right. Yeah. So uh, I ran across this book written by David Manton, Manton. I don't know. Uh, sorry if I butchered your name, David. Um, called Enzo Ferrari Secret War. And immediately my interest was uh, piqued because he claimed that um, Enzo was involved in uh, some espionage-like activities during World War II. Now, I was thinking that maybe he was like spying on Germany for the Allies or something like that. And it was, it was nothing like that. Um, it was more so that, uh, and I don't know how much everyone knows about um, World War II Italy. I'm sure there are listeners who know way more about it than I even do. Mussolini. But it wasn't so unified like Germany during the war. There was, it was almost like a civil war uh, between the fascists and anti-fascists. Uh, and there was a lot of different anti-fascist groups. There were communists. There were the um, partisans. And there were some other groups as well. And then there were organized criminals there, which I know Italy, organized crime, clutch the pearls i've never heard of it's, such a thing that's another conspiracy theory there steven you got it it's true yeah. so, so enzo <laughs> had to to navigate all this stuff and uh and he really wanted to just build race cars after the war was over i mean that's really what the guy cared about which mm -hmm. can you blame him he didn't care about all this politics and other things he just wanted to build race cars and race i just cars. want to race so he, he um, was a member of the fascist party. He would wear full fascist uniform and join in parades and all that. But it was just to appease Mussolini and all of his followers. I don't think he believed any of it. But he also um, uh, housed, was the Socialist Party. He, uh, they had their headquarters in a building he owned. So it's probably to keep them happy. And he also worked with partisans. And um, in his factories, he made equipment for the german and italian soldiers you know the fascists but at night his workers secretly would uh recondition and repair weaponry for the anti-fascist groups uh, in particular the partisans oh and they'd also make um the these devices oh i can't remember the italian name for them but basically they're like uh three-pointed stars that they throw on the road and these are actually invented by the Romans way back. And they use mm. them for elephants and, and horses um, and camels. Apparently, it's really effective on camels. Where it's basically like, it's uh, kind of like a jack, but it's like a three-point star, and it's sharp on the ends. And they throw it out on the road, and it punctures the tires mm. so they could stop like a convoy. And then once they stop, and they have a bunch of flat tires, and they fix it, then all the guys pop out and start shooting everybody and throwing grenades. And once they kill them all, then they can take whatever equipment. And, you know, so it was a really effective way of uh, guerrilla warfare that was waged in Italy back in the day. Um, so it was just really interesting how Enzo uh, kind of navigated this really dangerous uh, time. Uh, there were a lot of his contemporaries who were killed uh, because they didn't make the right moves. And, and you know, different groups had them killed, like uh, Ugo Gabato who was the head of Alfa Romeo. He was uh, killed. He, really? he was leaving for work one morning and a car pulled up and some people said a motorcycle also pulled up and one guy with a machine gun shot him a bunch of times and then some guys with handguns shot him a bunch of times and I think he had a lot of lead in him. <laughs> he, he was dead. Sounds um, overkill. And they pulled off and then, yeah, oh, definitely overkill. Yeah. I mean, they said they shot him at least 17 times or something yeah. like that. I mean, yeah. We're sending a message. He's pretty dead. <laughs> Um, it's my Italian. Eduardo uh, Weber, you know, they, everybody knows from the carburetors, uh, he just disappeared one day and they never found him. Mm. So, you know, whatever they did with his body, nobody ever found out. Go out on a boat with Junior. And, and no, Enzo was, uh, he knew both. Yeah, he knew both of these guys. Now, he didn't get along with Gobato so much, but Weber, he was friends with. And uh, so he really knew the risks that he was taking. But it showed that. He was really good at navigating yeah, difficult situations. Sides. I mean, he paid off um, a group that was trying to have him assassinated. <laughs> Gave him, I think, it was equivalent of three million dollars. So, Jeez. hey, if you got it, 
yeah, yeah. he had it i mean the, he was a savvy businessman as well as a really good race car driver so you know it shows just how what a survivor he was it was an mm. interesting story yeah Very no cool. wonder he was so touchy about you know the ford versus ferrari uh <laughs> occasion where ford wiped the map with him oh he was a competitor yeah yep. he was Oh, and also, um, he didn't talk about the war after the war. Uh, some people would try to pry into it, and he mm-hmm. would not talk about it. So I don't um, blame this is him. something that's just not widely known. Yeah. Interesting. I don't yeah. know why you'd want to talk about that. Just a fun corner from well, history. Some people would probably criticize him because he, he sided with the wrong side. I mean, he kind of sided with all the sides. Yeah. Uh, but they they have a problem with that you know nowadays we're really into canceling people because they did something that we didn't like 50 years ago or 100 years ago or whatever so i think uh, ferrari is a company who doesn't want to get into it which is fine they make cars they're not there to mm-hmm. talk about politics and all mm-hmm. that and mm-hmm. i respect mm-hmm. that so but it was an interesting story and i don't think any less of the man because of it yeah oh speaking of car movies i heard that um they're making a movie about Enzo Ferrari yes. and Adam Driver is going to be, I believe Adam Driver. He's got got the right look. I don't, I don't really watch any of his movies, but yeah, he's going to be Enzo. But I doubt they're going to talk about any of this stuff. No, isn't it supposed to take place uh, in the fifties? Focus on the fifty-seven, uh, twenty-four. Hour yeah, tomorrow? it's like some very specific time period. So yeah, that's what I heard. I don't know. Maybe they don't have a script yet. I don't know. Let's right. not write it for him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and see. So yeah. yeah. Well, All if right. it's anything like Ford versus Ferrari, it'll be a good movie. That, yeah. was, that was an excellent movie. I was surprised how well done it was. Yeah, even if you're not a, like a car person, like my daughter, uh, she doesn't really care, you know, about car movies. Mm. But she was like all about that. She was jumping out of her seat, you know, like getting all into it. So I love that movie. movie. All right. Well, let's talk about our inventory picks now. Yeah. Zach, you're up first. All right. Uh, This this 1968 Chevy Camaro convertible. I mean, always just an iconic classic, the Chevy Camaro. This one's a gorgeous example. The thing that got me, though, the thing that really popped out to me was just kind of in my mind playing the scene where on a snowy day, I dropped the (laughs) drop the top here it was just this image really caught me i was like that's what's gonna sell it my (laughs) eyeballs frozen in place as i'm cruising down the the highway so i just (laughs) that's that's why i picked this one chevy camaro is always a great car this is a gorgeous car it is but the uh yeah it just stood out to me because this would not be the time that i would decide to to drop the top yeah the dealer, yeah. I'm not going to attempt to say their name because I'm going to butcher it, but it looks like they're Kuyos, in yeah, Kuyos. They got awesome cars. Yeah, I mean, you take you take great shots when, whenever you can, and outdoor yeah. shots are great. I just kind of chuckled to myself when I saw this, but that's <laughs> it's an awesome car. It's like the yeah. girls wearing bikinis in the snow. It's like, yeah, what are we doing? It's not realistic. <laughs> no one's going to do that. Yeah, polar bear plunge. Yeah, there you go. There you go. I mean, they live in Wisconsin. They're like, they that's probably, probably, yeah, this is probably a mild like, day for them. It's 20 degrees outside. It's warm. <laughs> like, She's going to wear shorts and shorts flip on. flops. Yeah. <laughs> going to wear my bikini as I drive my Camaro. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's All it. Right. That's, yeah. that's it. Yeah, all right. And then kind of diff- changing it up here. Yeah. A little bit different, <laughs> a little more exotic. It looks Maybe. a little warmer here. GP Motorsports, where's that? <laughs> yeah, where are they located? Oh, California. Yeah. yeah. Figures. Um, California car. Yeah, well, the, the Cayman GT4s are just awesome cars, awesome track cars, fun on the street as well, but they're really built for track driving, uh, but street legal and uh, really well balanced cars. Um, I know everybody just loves the 911s i love 911s i wouldn't describe a 911 as so much balanced i know people are going to come at me with pitchforks and torches i'm not ripping on the 911 but the cayman is such a well-balanced car and the gt4 is so track focused this is such a a a little track carver i mean this thing will will carve through turns like nothing else it's kind of pricey but yeah these uh, they didn't make a lot of them so mm. 
Uh, if I, you know, if money were no object, this would be sorely tempting. Mm -hmm. Market's nuts right now. All prices are up. Yes, they are. But mm -hmm. this is the kind of car that it will increase in value over time. Oh, yeah. Guaranteed. Yeah. Now, don't hold me legally liable if you buy in a dozen, but no, it'll it'll increase in value. Yeah. Just don't wreck it at the track. Oh, no bowling yeah. ball action. Yeah. You might want to start <laughs> off with a Miata if you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Because, yeah, this is not the car to cut your teeth on. Mm. Mm. Let's see. This is my favorite picture right here. Mm. And it's just so good looking, too. It is. What a car. And Porsches, I, I, like, I love off-roaders and trucks and all that, but Porsches are a weakness of mine. Really? Yes. You didn't know that. I did not know that. This, uh. this has some, like, supercar flavor. I like. like Stephen has flavor. layers, yeah. Elizabeth. Okay. I'm like an Very... onion. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious sweet onion. Oh, yeah. Take a <laughs> bite out of that. Hold yeah. on. <laughs> <sighs> All right. I like this car. Yeah, yeah. I, like the, I like the Porsches with the supercar flavor. I'm not really like a big mm. Porsche person otherwise. Um, but Porsche. It, Porsche. Elizabeth. Gosh, Elizabeth. That's why I don't okay. like it. That's what, people <sighs> correcting me. It's Porsche. <laughs> <laughs> Porsche. <laughs> It's like when people mispronounce my name. Oof. Yeah. I did that Stephen. for three years. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't have a push button start on it. Nope. That's crazy. See, yeah. another reason to like it. Hmm. And oh, and also it's a manual. Well, yeah, of course. It's got to be a manual. Let's well, not all Porsches right are. That's yeah. right. That's why I don't like all Porsches. And that's another Porsches. reason to really like the GT4s. They're all manual. Oh, so. are they? I, I believe so. If I remember correctly. Oh, before somebody, you know, rah, rah, I'm 99% sure they're all manuals. Maybe there are some PDKs. I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, that's refreshing because, you know, around like 2016 is when a lot of kind of the supercar ones started to move away from manuals. And I don't understand that. I would never own a supercar that oh. wasn't a manual. And, like, and you'll note that they me. have the, the pull loops on the doors. So, mm -hmm. you know, this it's it's a track car. It's oh, not yeah, some right. plush uh, luxury vehicle. I mean, they're nice, but it's primarily a track car. Mm. I mean, right. you know, not stripped down interior. Street let's go legal. Have on this one. What's that? It, let's go have these on this one. Take it to Road Atlanta. Uh, you know, I, I <laughs> if I could swing that, I would. I really would. Oh, There's a track nice. not too far from my house, and wow, I would take this thing there in a heartbeat. I drive it on the road. Yes, on the, I'd wreck it. I'd wreck it on the road too. Of course. Don't no. Okay, no halvesies. That's it. We're done. Flipping trucks. <laughs> Flipping Flip trucks. Truck. <laughs> be a horrible thing. No flapjack time. action here. Oh, the attention to detail. Yeah. Don't joke like about nuts. that. Look at that stitching, and then like the carbon yeah. fiber mm -hmm. inlay on the door. It's and a beautiful car. Suede. Yeah, it's got a lot, a lot going on for it. All right. Pretty nice so, for a track car, huh? My pick is going to look so <laughs> trashy in comparison yeah. no, I think <laughs> and on the other end of the spectrum yeah. it's a fixer upper <laughs> yeah i want i wanted to pick a project car like i'm just itching to get another project car although mm -hmm. i don't know if i'd pay that much for one we have had had a lot of second gen um firebirds they had a formula and we had a trans am and then we just had like a base model so i'm like I'm dying for one, man. We had a, the last one was a 74 and we just didn't have like the space for it. We had to get rid of it. And, you know, we don't have a space for a car now, uh, a project car, the HOA would lose their minds if we had one because they've <laughs> taken pictures like of us working on our cars inside our garage before. So I can't imagine if we had an action. I'm not, I'm just talking about changing like the air box. Yeah. My Hellcat. Like I can't imagine we're storing a car here. Like we would be like they would come out with their pitchforks, but ostracized. Such a beautiful car. I love that nose. Like I, ugh. damn, they're good looking cars. It's got so much potential. Mm. I mean, as mm -hmm. far as the project goes, our car goes. I'm sure it's in pretty good shape. Is this yeah. a roller or doesn't have like an a, engine in it? Let's find out. Oh, oh, oh it's got some oh, rust spots. Oh, it's got a little bit mm. of cancer. Yeah, yep. Yeah, you're gonna. I spoke it too soon. Yeah. yeah. And that's a bad spot to have rest on. But I love restore muscle car. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not gonna <laughs> oh yeah. Gonna well they do car I mean, apart too much. I, I I mean, you can you can look at their actual projects where they take a mm -hmm. car like this to 
uh, fully restored. And I it's know it's incredible. Amazing. Like, incredible you know, cars. you can spend a lot of time on that site. Just I know, I, I yeah. watching I magic. The, the floor plan and the floor pans are those still um, there or are they Swiss cheese? Probably not. Let's look at, yeah. let's, let's look at some of the restore muscle card now that we're on the subject of them mm-hmm. um, i didn't want to go out <laughs> saying oh well this car's got rust in it <laughs> yeah, <there's probably> ninety-four <laughs> they've got let's see that tra- oh, yeah. trans am special that edition looks- and then they've got this car see that's that's what the other one could end up as yeah right hands that's, that's the nice. end product right there mm-hmm. what, what engine did they put in that 455 455. Nicho. High out. Nice. It's a beautiful, beautiful nice car. Nice wheels. Look at that. Nose bird. It, it's a screaming chicken, Elizabeth. Let's use <laughs> proper terminology. <laughs> <laughs> I have a shirt that says that on there. Somebody, uh, some snob that I used to work for sent it to me <laughs> to make fun of me for having a bird. It's a beautiful car. And they've got great inventory. Yeah. Yeah. Always. So. Yeah, I just picked that car because I I need a project car. I'm jonesing, I'm jonesing hard. I'm just got too much, too much not car stuff going on. You got, right you got to turn some wrenches. Yeah, no, we all get the. There you go. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, look at that price. I can never. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought the Porsche was expensive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's Talk about what, pricey. I mean, like, the bandit cars like they just got priced out like oh yeah time i got old enough to actually maybe like buy something nice like i got priced out of the market and that's just I, and it goes back to that year one thing because like they bought up just every 77 78 even some of the 79s they would like change the noses on them and they turned them into the 77 looking bandit cars yeah. and they like they kind of shrunk the market of what was out there especially project car wise like you yeah. can just pick one up and work on it now you just got away from the remake smoking the bandit to uh drop the price <laughs> you know destroy the market on these things oh but if they remade it they'd have to use a different car like a more modern car because they yeah. just have to so what would they use a camaro Maybe. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh wow Zach. Maybe. i just don't like the idea of them messing with smoking the bandit yeah. Like if they were going to do it, I would prefer it to be a time piece. Like where it was like taking place in the, in the eighties. I don't know. I mean, early and it was driving a Kia Stinger, mm. you know, it could be a different dynamic. I hate, I hate this. <laughs> <I know. laughs> I'm joking. Awful. There's yeah. no good options. Like it's, the only... just, it's just not funny. <laughs> Everybody would get mad. Like, cause if he, yeah. he, if he drove a Camaro, cause Pontiac, you know, dead and gone, but so there's no Pontiac out there that there's would be a viable substitute. And then like Trans Am Worldwide does those um those Trans Am makeovers on the Camaros. Yeah. They do like pretty legit work, but I don't know. Just, just don't touch smoking a band. I'm sorry I brought it. Hey, Buick's still <laughs> around and he could be driving a Buick Encore. Mm. <laughs> With the like Bluetooth. I, said, I, yeah. Yeah. I hate this so much. <laughs> yes. This got uncomfortable. I know. Real quick. <laughs> All right. So on that note, um, we're gonna wrap it up before we yeah. we butcher the idea of the Smokey and the Bandit remake, which I hope nobody touches. Don't yeah. remake I would it. Exactly Don't do it. it. Contact Perfect. me for info or for ideas, Kane. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> Even is not available for script hire. Yes. I just want to let everyone know. <laughs> All right, so tune in next time. We're going to talk about some more car stuff. All right, let's stop recording. If I can figure out how to stop recording. Yeah, to click the clack. It's the stop recording button. Yeah, that one that says record, you hit it again and be like, I'm not recording. Oh, I'm trying. I'm trying to. Computers are hard, I know. Well, it. (laughs) I'm so nice. It wasn't showing up.